I lie. The final tier list video that I made about a year ago or more or less was not the final tier list. I apologize, but I also don't apologize because I put disclaimer in there that due to the changes in meta and how it goes, Steve go a lot higher. We saw what happens. Anyways, let's get right to it. This time we're doing it all in one video. The first tier list of 2024 and where I think the current meta stands and we're going to do it right now. Unless stated otherwise, I'll be presenting all characters in order from worst to best. Let's get to it. The E tier, me Sword Fighter. Me Sword Fighter is one of the least played characters offline. Ultimate is a game with so many amazing sorties. Me Sword Fighter, not one of them. Next up, King DDD. King DDD, he's a big body with the slowest air speed in the entire game. His best tool, Gordo, can be easily hit back at him by almost any attack. He's big, deal with it. Isabel. Isabel, you take everything that Villager has, make it somewhat worse. Popular online, but almost non-existent at high level offline. And Fishing Rod can be some good cheese. Piranha Plant. Piranha Plant was added to the game as an afterthought, and his tier position isn't much different. He's a slow character with a terrible back air, lackluster normals, and gimmicky specials that are very easy to work around. Little Mac, higher than usual, but still very low. Peanut has made some impressive upsets with Mac, defeating Kurama at SmashCon 2023, but he has a notoriously bad recovery and basically no air game whatsoever. But wait, are these really the worst characters? It wouldn't be an HBox video without a little twist. So before we move on to the D tier, I made one additional tier below the E tier, the LOL tier. It's just one character in a tier all by himself where he belongs, a true F tier character. Give it up once again for Ganondorf. For most characters, if you hit Ganondorf once, you can probably find a way to kill him. He's incredibly slow on the ground and in the air and relies on cheese to take your stocks before you take his. You didn't think Ganondorf would be above those other characters, did you? Well, I wanted to mix you up. You can't win tournaments without some mix-ups, right? I'm teaching you a lesson. Put the worst character a little later in the video and you confuse your viewers and... Anyway, D tier next. Lucario. Lucario pretty much needs to be losing in order to win. And that's very clearly not a good thing. It's not rare for Lucario to take an unexpected game like we saw with VV versus MK Leo at Let's Make Moves Miami. It's a rough life for Lucario. Zelda. Zelda seemed to have some potential in the early days, but once everyone understood how she worked, it was clear she was definitely a low tier character. And obviously she's more common online than an offline. King K. Rule. Another big body that gets juggled, comboed, and edge guarded forever. Obviously, Kirby Kid wasn't active in major tournaments in 2023, but we saw the step of other players in Japan and North America. Showing the character might have some viability, but you gotta know what you're doing. He's He gets comboed quite a bit. Kirby. Unlike Puff, Kirby has very slow airspeed, making it a challenge for him to space his stubby limbs. Also, Kirby gets guaranteed drill rested by Puff. Just saying. Despite this, JJ JJ has gotten some decent results, placing second at Cascadia to Clash 2023. Banjo. Like Dr. Mario, Banjo has found much more usage online than in offline events. His projectiles don't offer much reward most of the time, and he becomes far less threatening once all Wonder Wings are depleted in a stock. Belmont. Belmont, Simon, and Richter, they're a great crowd pleaser when T3 Dom pulls off a flashy setup, but slow airspeed and all for recovery will always hold the Belmonts back. Also, if you want to fight my puff of Belmonts, by all means, go ahead. I will cook it up. Dr. Mario. Now, I used to have Dr. Mario as bottom three in the game. No more. I have seen the light from a guy named Jazar from Mexico and some other players, too. He's actually a pretty popular pick online, and his hard-hitting aerials and smash attacks can be menacing. But, as we all know, he's very slow, has one of the worst recoveries in the entire game, but by no means can I put him any lower than D anymore, because he's got some tricks up his sleeve. Or maybe it's just pills. Donkey Kong. The average Chunky Kong clip might make you think that DK is broken but his huge hurt box and telegraph recovery make him very unviable in the current meta. And that's it for the D tier. Moving up the tier list, we're gonna see some characters that are now a bit more viable, and you'll probably see more on streams in the final brackets, and a lot more characters which you can probably name some notable pros for. Villager. Kept has earned some notable wins in Japan with Villager, most recently over Akaki, 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 Akaki Kusu. That really good hero player. But yet again, this character doesn't really make much sense to play with with so many better options in this style. You're gonna play Villager, you gotta commit to the bit, and it's not easy. Mewtwo. 
Mewtwo was never a popular character in Ultimate, but has grown more obscure as the meta progressed. He's actually one of the least played characters in the entire meta. His obnoxious tail heart box, floatiness, and lightweight have and always will be his Achilles heel, and it makes sense that he has so few results. Ridley. Ridley is a good example of a solid moveset and stats on a character that's just too big. He suffers from all the typical big body problems, but doesn't have the big body weight to compensate. Although I will say, shout outs to Smub, uh, MDVA. Guy makes Ridley look godlike. Good stuff, Smub. Ike. Ike has fallen off harder than most characters throughout Ultimate, with MKLeo winning one of the first majors, Genesis with him, and dropping the character shortly after. He has very few mix-ups and a simple, obvious game plan, plus he's very easy to gimp. But no, DeBuzz, Ike is not bottom two. Please, you cannot be on Team Liquid spewing such rhetoric, please! Marth. Yep, Marth over Ike. We all know this, Lucina is just better Marth in every single way, and she's right there. MK Leo occasionally busts out the Marth, but that's the bulk of his time in the spotlight. Otherwise, you might as well just play Lucina. Also, big shots to Ignaz with the Marth from the West Coast, godlike. Bowser Jr. I didn't forget him this time. Bowser Jr. has had some notable moments throughout Smash history, such as Ketchup's win on Light, but ultimately a character with underwhelming strengths and few results to show, although players like TM7 Zap I think are pushing the character further and further. Also, shoutouts to Tweak for being a junior player way back in the day. I think for Smash 4 also. Robin, another very underrepresented character. Robin has some strong options, but has limited usages on his best options when better characters just don't. But again, slow, right? You need the speed to really keep up in this game, but we've seen players push Robin as far as the character can possibly go. Me Gunner. Like many mid and low tier zoners, there are actually so many characters that do the same things as Me Gunner, but better. And again, this is not a character you commonly see in tournaments, but Capitan Sito has made some huge upsets, even placing second at Low Tide City in 2023. You can commit to this character, but you know, you got Samus right there and other characters which might just give you the better investment long return if you want to play the slow patient zoning game. Duck Hunt. This character has lots of unique setups and traps, but they take a lot of effort and don't achieve much in most cases. They're a common character in online brackets, but are rarely seen in large offline tourneys. Again, you gotta know how to use the can, you gotta know how to use the, the, the clay pigeon. The, the shooting guys, like you gotta, you gotta do all that properly, and I think a lot of people don't really have the wherewithal to micromanage, especially the character that isn't as fast as others. Lucas, Lucas has had very few high-level results since the game came out. He's lost consistent throw setups he had in Smash 4, and requires excessively technical setups to achieve anything broken. Jigglypuff, sadly, after some much-deserved buffs, Puff still falls short in Ultimate's current meta. Base Mage has gotten some pretty impressive results. Fourth place at Frosty Fostings, top eight major upset. And of course, Senra, who almost won entire regionals. Uh, I think even majors in Japan. But, you know, the character, pretty, pretty middle tier character, I would say mid-low. Uh, I've Obviously my main, I've played the character since the game came out. Very, very fun. Without the buffs, she'd be very low. But luckily now, has enough, you know, kind of clutch cheese options to come back when she has to. Um, but yeah, this is where I would solidly put Jigglypuff, and I think the other Puff players might agree too. Link! Link had a brief flicker of life in the early meta, then faded into obscurity. His movement is slow, and his setups don't offer anything that, you know, much better than many other characters have. And for that reason, out of the three Links in the game, to me, he's the lowest. Bowser! Hero in Japan and Leon have made multiple top eights, but no breakthrough performances at Super Majors in 2023. Unless, of course, we count Hero at Kagaribi, which I think was definitely the best one. Despite this, Bowser is still typically a big body character that gets beat up easily by faster, smaller characters. After the C tier, we're going to go into our first unordered tier. These characters in the next few tiers will be grouped by tiers to separate their viability, but they are far too close, in my opinion, to compare against one another. So for this tier, because it's not ordered, we'll be going to this character as an alphabetical order. Again, B tier is not ordered. Toon Link. Toon Link has been overshadowed by both other Links for the entirety of Ultimate's lifespan. Doing a little bit better now though, he lacks top level representation and offline results. Although shout outs to Kobe, uh, when he does decide to play Toon Link, it's really sick to watch. But yeah, just not nearly as viable as Young Link for many reasons. Hero. The occasional Twitch clip of a thwack or Hocus Pocus tends to be the most attention a hero gets these days. 
Uh, Kakekusu made multiple top eights in Japan last year, probably the best hero right now. He relies on RNG and can't compare to other stories without it, but players like Beast Mode Paul have really shown the magic this character has when you embrace the RNG and think on the fly on your feet. Krom. With Roy falling off, Krom only falls harder. He has few dedicated mains or recent results. He has a great moveset, but his recovery is very limited compared to Roy's, and a lot of people just meme him at this point. You know, if you want to die quickly, uh, be in the wrong direction. We Fit Trainer. We Fit has got to be one of the strangest characters in Ultimate, so not too many people play her. Her deep breathing is a powerful buff, and she can be pretty tricky, but generally she relies on gimmicks, although players like Oolong, they've been really, really doing some amazing stuff with the character. So it's cool to see the creativity that you can have when using the soccer ball, especially. Pichu! Pichu has become one of the most forgotten top tiers of the early meta, and potentially the greatest falloff of any character in a fighting game ever due to nerfs. Pichu was thought to be the best character at one point early on, and now right here in B tier. Meaningful nerfs on top SDI strategies took him from top tier to a mid tier in a very short time. He still has explosive damage and kill power, a decent recovery, and of course, Natoru kind of carrying the character on his back along with some other players. Pit and Dark Pit. Zack Ray put Pit back on the map last year, placing top three in multiple Japanese meters with him in really entertaining style. Pit has very few results besides this and tends to be a pretty underwhelming character compared to higher tiers. And usually if you ask me who the most middle of the line character is, it's Pit. You know, you need fundies to win. He's not a bad character. He's not a great character. He's right in the middle. Sephiroth. Tweak makes his character look pretty broken. His range, sweet spot kill power, and wing buffs are pretty crazy. But his frame data is super slow, and he can struggle with sour spots. Meta Knight. Meta Knight is always scary with his quick burst options that lead to touch of death combos, but tends to be very predictable. MK Leia will occasionally burst him out to please the crowd, but otherwise he's a rare sight to see in top brackets. Shouts to Bonk though, and show. Incineroar. SkyJ has completely transformed everyone's perspective of Incineroar, taking him from potential bottom tier to the consideration that he's possibly a top tier character. <laughs> he still has tons of glaring weaknesses, being the slowest character on the ground and having a very gimbable recovery, but this is burst personified as a character. Super scary to fight. Luigi. The lack of active Luigi players in the past year has hindered his results. Despite his ridiculous grab combos, he's very exploitable offstage and has terrible airspeed. But yeah, big shoutouts to, to Lugi and others. Still making it work. Inkling. They are relevant for a while with Cosmos and Space a few years ago, but now have shifted to ages. It seems the more time passes, the more players abandon this character. Inkling has a great movement and frame data, but can struggle to kill and match potential of the higher tier characters. Ice Climbers. Big D made massive upsets, placing third at Smash Ultimate Summit 6, but there's very little representation of Ices besides him. They can pull off some ridiculous desync setups, but Nana is very exploitable and has problematic AI as well. Rosalina and Luma. They're one of the least played characters in the entire game, requiring lots of knowledge and tech skill to master. You need a giant brain, and speaking of giant brains, DeBuzz still remains a top 25 player with heavy use of the character, so they can definitely get the job done in the right hands. And of course, as we've seen, even though he means a few characters, mainly Rosalina netted him a second place result at Super Smash Con 2023, one of the biggest tournaments of all time. Captain Falcon. Probably the character we all wish was higher, but Falcon has struggled throughout Ultimate's entire lifespan. He did receive a few buffs, even one attempting to fix rock crocking, but it's made very little difference. Fatality was also very inactive in 2023, but of course, Jogibu and Karage in Japan doing really, really cool stuff with this character. Sean from Florida, a few others. He still is a, a powerhouse in a lot of ways. And that is it for the B tier. And this next tier is another unordered tier. All these characters are certainly better than the previous group of B tier fighters, but they are super close in their own right. Young Link. Young Link was gaining some traction in 2022 with breakout performances from Toast and Skittles, but were pretty inactive in 2023. This character can't be underestimated, though, with fast, annoying projectiles that lead to combos and even kill confirms. Again, another huge shout out to Kobe, because I love seeing what that guy does to that character. Mega Man. This is another character that you really don't see much of in tournaments. MPG got a lot of attention when he upset Zamba and Gact in 2022, but he hasn't been as active recently. He has strong zoning, but cannot compare at all to Rob or Pac-Man when it comes to this category. Ness. Ness has also fallen off quite a bit, and... Gact and Sender still carrying the character's top level results. 
His big hitbox is an amazing back throw, always dangerous, but being a slower character with an explodable recovery, it's hard for him to stay relevant in this currently shifting meta, especially with the DLC characters. Sheik! Sheik is a pretty rare character in tournaments, especially since Void no longer competes, but of course we saw the potential of the character with players like Web JP, especially at Watch the Throne, nearly beating some of the best in the world Game 5 last talk situations. Her gameplay is very technical and precise, so a lot of players opt for easier characters, but you can still be very rewarding to players who put in the time. Falco. Tilde has been leading the Falco meta for a while, but hasn't traveled too much lately. He managed to place third at Gommel. Uh, Falco, of course, has some of the best early percent combos in the game, and plenty of kill confirms into back air. And the cool thing about Falco is like every region seems to have a top Falco of their own, uh, so you can easily be a character that wins a major. Again, everyone in this tier can win a major. Ryu and Ken. The Shotos are always scary, with Shoryu confirms to worry about, and of course, each of the characters individually has their own uh, method of racking up percent and combos. Uh, I put Ryu and Ken together in this tier because I honestly do think that even if you master both, like we've seen at a very, very top level, like Osimo, for instance, really almost dominate an entire region with it. And it makes me feel that Ken can actually do the exact same, just having a different game plan in mind. You don't see subs, you know, you don't see so much top level representation these days besides Osimo in Japan, who has won in Aquila, um, but also, you know, Jazo and Vendetta with Ken in the States and some other players as well. Greninja! Tarek has performed well in Europe and acquired some first place wins with the character, such as Cumbre 2 in San Jose. He's fast, has great kill confirms, very slippery, great edge guarding, but he tends to be overshadowed by characters like Fox, who just overwhelm in general. Byleth! With Leo moving away from Byleth, the character's future is uncertain, but he's certainly gotten some incredible results along the way. The fact that Leo was able to do what he did with his character is. I mean, it makes him the GOAT still. So. The character has many great strengths, range, KO power, recovery, out of shield game, but he seems to be getting left behind by the meta. I think a lot of it was a matchup check in the first place, and with other sorties that are so good, it's no surprise to see a lot of players shifting away from Byleth to characters like Korn, even. And what's above the A tier? Well, naturally, the A plus tier. This one is ordered. When we get to the higher parts of the tier list, I actually have enough of an opinion to designate which characters I think are slightly better than the ones before it, but still within the same tier. So here's the A plus tier in order. Sora. Sora doesn't see much representation these days besides for Kameme, who performs well with Sora in Japan. Sora's aerials can be tricky to deal with and he can recover from just about anywhere, arguably the best recovery in the entire game. But he's overall pretty underwhelming compared to the really, really top tiers. But man, this character is a menace to deal with. As a puff player, please kill me. Zero Suit Samus. She's really fast and hard to catch. She has some solid kill confirms as well. She's mostly fallen off since Mars hasn't been competing as much. Shu has some good results. And uh, I believe Doorstop. Me Brawler. Isn't it funny how Nintendo made a me that belongs in the bottom tier, a me that belongs right in the middle tier, and a me that belongs in the top tier? That's Nintendo for you. Me Brawler is a menace. This character is very rare to find at the top level, but still great normals, fast movement, and gets super early kills with down throw at B, and you give a character a flip kick. I mean, come on. Shulk. Shulk is a polarizing character since he can do insane things like break out of any combo with shield art. He isn't represented as much in the top level currently, but Komei recently upset both Yoshidora and Ken. Lucina. She hasn't changed much at all since the release version of the game, but many early Lucina players like MK Leo have switched to more interesting sorties. Proto Bonham has gotten amazing results with Lucina, but just hasn't been active in the last year. And I think Lucina, if I had to put it on the side here, probably wins the award for the best character with the least reps currently. Also, of course, shoutouts to Mr. E, Leon, and some others. Yoshi. Yoshidora changed many opinions on the character last year, holding his own with Aqua and Mia in Japan and becoming ranked number 10 worldwide. Yoshi has great hitboxes as one of the hardest characters to juggle with his double jump armor. This character just gets his way in a lot of situations that you might not expect. If you don't believe me, go to Elite Smash, play Yoshi, press the A button a lot, you'll see what happens. Olimar. Olimar got hit hard with some nerfs in the early meta, and has since fallen off a bit more at the Buzz and Shoot on, moving towards other characters. Even so, he still has some amazing damage output with Pikmin and an excellent up smash. Samus and Dark Samus. Siski plays fourth at the coin box IRL and maintains good results with Samus with Icy Mist and Quick. They don't have the greatest matchup spread and a lot of versatility the top tiers have, but 
you've seen this character able to win majors and if you know a samus can almost dominate an entire region being europe clearly they have the options and tools to do so maybe even north america and of course how can you forget yara in japan pokemon trainer having three characters and one is incredibly useful making it easy to adjust to many situations this also makes the character a bit difficult to master since you have to learn three movesets and understand when to switch and they've fallen off a bit due to the most normal players like quid and Atedia not traveling too often although it is still cool to see beast bring out the pt at the regionals and pop off bayonetta it's time for us to admit that bayonetta is really a top tier character players like bloom and lima put the character back on the map last year with Lima upsetting riddles at Coinbox IRL. She isn't nearly represented as much as she was in Smash 4, obviously, but still has long cutscene combos and the risk of witch time. A good Bayonetta is one of the scariest facts anyone has to face in a bracket run. Diddy Kong. Tweak continues to carry the Diddy Kong meta, getting multiple top hits with Diddy and Sephiroth. He has excellent neutral and ledge hopping with Banana, which I consider to be a top five projectile in the entire game, and great frame data to capitalize on openings. Very high tech skill character at its peak, I feel. Wolf, a very strong fundamental character, but just doesn't have anything too game breaking at the moment. Jackal has gotten good results, placing second at Crown, the third in June. And I mean, it's it's, it's bread and butter, the character. Um, and of course, Ouch as well, really shows this character can do. Um, it might be, I don't know. I feel like we're long overdue for a, a Wolf major win. We need, we need one pretty soon, I feel. Mario. Karama continues to place decently with Mario. MK Leo has lost to multiple Mario players, such as Super Dog from Mexico. He has terrifying ladder combos and amazing frame data. He really is a character that has nearly every tool that you need. Um, just struggles a little bit with the higher, higher, truly top tier characters. Wario. Gluto is arguably the fifth best player in the world with Wario, an A plus character. He dominates Europe, performs well in majors, wins them in North America too. Uh, he has great early percent combos and, of course, Waft. Because of Waft, you can never really count Wario out. Probably one of the best comeback mechanics in the entire game. Despite his strengths, Wario's stubby limbs make him have to do a lot of work to play effectively. And the best characters in the game are typically much easier to pilot. Roy. Cola was not as active last year, but made plenty of top eights. He's an amazing fast character. He racks up damage quickly as one of the best kill confirms in the game with Jer. He's just a bit outshined by better sorties like Aegis and Cloud. Corrin, probably one of the most slept on characters until MK Leo started using her, and now Shattuck is making waves, recently placing first at Santa Paws 2 and low tier city DFW. She's definitely not the best sword in ultimate, but has, still has great spacing, juggling, and a scary mix up with Pin, and this character by herself can win majors. I'm sure you've noticed quite a few changes so far. The game has changed a lot since my last final tier list. It goes to show how much work the competitors have put into the game to really break it apart and find the best strategies. But now, if you want to find out who the best characters in the game are, look no further. This is the S tier. And this tier is ordered. We're approaching now the best of the best. Terry. Riddles always has a Terry ready for situations where Kazuya isn't working and Andres Afen as well. The auto turnaround as well as the go mechanic make it easy and consistent for Terry to deal insane damage and take stocks. And of course, his frame data and his hitboxes, hurtboxes are pretty wild when it comes to ultimate. Min Min. Min Min's combination of range and power makes her one of the hardest characters to approach. Her unique fighting style makes her an excellent counter pick, which both the Buzz and Protobanum use her for. I mean, she can punch you from across the entire stage. No one else can do that. It's Dalsim on crack. Pac-Man. Pac-Man is another great ultimate zoner with tons of dangerous projectiles and traps and great boxing tools to go with them. T still performs very well, recently top eating ultimate fighting arena, and he has one of the best recoveries in the entire game. Uh, he really is uh, kind of like Steve Light in some ways. You, you put up a fire hydrant, you get your fruit out, and you wait, and you bait, and you win. Pikachu. This was the previous best card in the game, but a lot has changed. Although he doesn't have the greatest results at the top level, Pikachu's strengths are undeniable. He can recover from the deepest edge guards, drag you off the stage and spike you, and he's still one of the hardest characters to hit with his tiny hurt box at Pancakes. And of course, big shoutouts to currently Shiny Mark, really pushing the meta for this character. Palutina. Thanks to players like Raflo, who recently eliminated MKLeo at Ultimate Fighting Arena, as well as Chase, Louis Money, 
Chad, Jagaimo. Palatina is making a resurgence in the meta, proving she is, in fact, a lot better than Incineroar. Sorry, not sorry. She's very rewarding to simple, fundamental gameplay, and her invincible options always demand respect. Peach and Daisy. New Days popped off this year, winning Riptide and just recently placing third at Genesis Black. Although it's not as dominant in the early meta, Peach and Daisy still have plenty of strengths. Float canceling enables tons of unique spacing options and some of the most insane combos in the game. She's a character that will war the time that you put in, but you gotta put in the time because those those combos aren't gonna lab themselves. Cloud. We talked about how Spargo was the second best player in the world for using Aegis, but Cloud is a character that he's most known for. People originally slept on Cloud since he's not the same as Smash 4, but Cloud still has a ton of range, damage, and kill power. And the notion that Cloud's recovery isn't great, I think was definitely over-exaggerated. It's not the best recovery, but the really good players always seem to make it back when you really think they won't, uh, especially when you have Limit always as an option. Joker. Although it's not the same as in the early days, MKLeo is still doing ridiculous things with Joker. The character is so versatile and tricky with unique options like Gun, our Sun is still one of the best comeback mechanics in the entire game. I just think a lot of people have finally figured out how to deal with Joker. Because a lot of people have put Joker at the very top of the tier list not long ago, before the current meta. And you got players like Omega also pushing that envelope. Fox. Light has consistently been a contender for the best player in the United States of America. Recently, Kananabe's Fox has been getting lots of attention as well. They actually had one of the best sets of the entire 2023 at port priority, of course. Fax is an overwhelmingly aggressive and fast character with great damage output, kill confirms, and tech chases. You gotta be on your feet to play this character, but man, he somehow is good in every single Smash game, except like Brawl. Kazuya! There's probably no other character in the entirety of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate that's scared to get hit by than Kazuya at 0%. Riddles won Collision earlier this year and is always a monster threat in bracket and tons of players have a pocket Kazuya. Just make sure, if your opponent has a pocket Kazuya, ban FD. Save yourself the struggle, ban FD. Snake. Apollo Kage just won Genesis Black and placed third at Dreamhack Atlanta. Snake does so much damage and kills really, really early. No part of the stage is safe and of course we have players like Hurt from Japan really shifting almost every notion we've had as character maybe earlier on in the meta this is an incredible incredible character heavy really good recovery mix-ups some of the best portals in the game grenades the list goes on snake busted character and that's it actually wait we seem to be missing a few characters right but we're already at s tier so i guess we have to put one final tier above the s tier and this is the god tier these five characters I've put in their own little bubble. Five gods, if you will. <laughs> Anyways, these five god tier characters really have defined the meta in so many ways. If you want to win, and you want to win hard, at least have one of these characters in your pocket. Because they were designed with one purpose. And that's to beat the leaving hell out of all your opponents. Number five, Pyra and Mithra. Spargo is number two in the world, co-maining Aegis. Mithra has insane frame dead on combos, and Pyra hits you like a truck. It's one of the few times where a sort of a transformation character, that sort of trope, has really been perfected. Their only weakness can be their recovery, which is linear either vertically with Pyra or horizontal with Mithra. But if you know what you're doing, how to switch between them, you make it tricky to where you're gonna go, and it's just the perfect butter up and then beat him up character and get the finisher with Pyra. I mean, it's just the character, anyone can play them and it just makes sense. And especially given how much knockback Pyra's aerials have, how much speed and frame that a Mithra has, it's the perfect storm in so many ways. So the best sortie in the game, Pyra and Mithra, AKA Aegis. Number four, Rob. Zomba has broken through to the top 15. Just recently placing second at Genesis Black and winning Cirque to CFL2 over Light. Rob is the ultimate zoner, where he has great projectiles but also amazing up close frame data. There's a reason why MKLeo wants to play the character as well. Not to mention uh, players like Big Boss. I mean, when they're on, they are just on and they do not let go. This character has everything. One of the best recoveries in the game. Gyro, Gimps, zero to deaths, by the way, which kill you at embarrassingly low percents. Lasers, passives, 
just the most insane hitboxes. And the fact is, he's got weight to him too. This character has it all. If any Rob player ever complains to you about losing, tell him to get good and tell him skill issue. There's no reason you should lose. Number three, Mr. Game & Watch. It's time for us to admit, Game & Watch is top three. Mia has redefined the Game & Watch meta, winning Rise and Grind, placing top three at so many other events, and even in discussion for being the number one player in the world currently. People talk about the new meta revolving around Steve and Game & Watch because of their consistent results. He has so many amazing tools, up be out of shield, air juggles, amazing edge guards, a great recovery, and you'll notice that the great recovery, apart from Pyramithra, the really good recovery is a, a very consistent theme of top tier characters. You'll notice, sometimes if you ignore everything else in the game, just looking at a character's recovery can give you a pretty adequate prediction of where they're gonna be. In the same way that Pyra and Mithra is the exception to this rule for the top tier, I would say maybe Isabelle is the exception for this rule in the bottom tier. Great recovery, tragic character. But the general theme, if you graphed like best towards recoveries in the game and then graph the tier list, you're gonna see generally uh, an equal trend. But yeah, Game & Watch, just everything. Just press as many buttons as you can uh, and you got it too. I mean, it, you have a, you have a safe up smash in neutral. It's, it's, it's pretty wild. Number two, Sonic. Sonic's just won the coin box IRL and continues to place top three in majors. Ken has been doing pretty well too, getting top eight at Wasa Throne and Port Priority 8. And Sonic's of course won Port Priority 8. With his speed and kill confirms, he's a timeout machine, but can also switch to aggressive play at any time. And really, you have to thank the the big four, the four horsemen as they call them, you know, Aqua, Spargo, Mia, Sonic, those four players. If you think they haven't had an effect in this tier list, you are dead wrong. Because if they are the four best in the world, there is a reason. And that character is probably half the reason. You'll notice also the characters in this god tier, these five characters, are often the worst matchup for 90% of this cast. It's going to be either Pyramithra, Rob, Game & Watch, Sonic, or of course, our undisputed number one character. Number one, Steve. I'm very happy I'm making this tier list because ain't no way am I going to leave my final tier list on YouTube having Steve at, what did I have him at, 15th last time? No. We saw the writing on the wall, and I, I should have waited to make the list, but here we are. Alcala has solidified himself as the best player in the world using Steve. He breaks everything in this game with blocks, minecart, diamond sword, anvil, and and everything else. I don't want to. I don't want to get steam coming out of my head just talking about this character. The thing is, guys, as far as we know, there's no more patches to stop him unless we hold on to the copium that the Sora patch, the Sora amiibo patch, will finally fix things. It probably won't. But as we see it fit, there's most likely no more patches to stop this guy. Steve has been the object of. The most controversial in this game, easily. But the reason I do not put Steve in his own tier is because, like I said, we do have four horsemen. The best Game & Watch, the best Cloud, and the best Sonic seem to beat up the best Steve on a good day. And justifiably, for that reason, I can't ignore that. And I can't put Steve in his own tier. But I can still say he is definitely the best character in this game. By a decent margin, just not in his own tier. And the amount of Steves the world has seen present, the fact there's a top Steve in every single region, uh, shows that to be fit. Also, keep an eye out for Syrup, whose Steve is getting better and better. And of course, every other Steve around the world. And when it comes to the topic of offline versus online, obviously Steve has been banned at my Coinbox series, because I think, given the delay of online, makes a character that much more of a menace than he already is. But there's some people arguing that Sonic should be banned from Coinbox and online tournament for the same reason. I'll, I'll, I'll do a discussion another time. As for right now, number one, Steve. So everyone, this has been the first tier list of 2024. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. And of course, I'll see everyone next time in my final, final, final tier list, which will inevitably happen. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know where I got it right. Let me know what I got wrong. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but don't forget, I'm now streaming on both Twitch and YouTube. So turn on that bell to make sure you see when I go live and be part of the action every day with some ultimate and melee. Thanks, guys.